And what we're going to use is a very, very expensive piece of equipment to help kind of fill in the rest of our anatomy. And that's namely articulating paper. So I, I hope everybody has a piece of articulating paper and I'm going to show you how we're going to interpret it. And I want to see if you like this as a means to create texturing in your restoration. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to rub articulating paper and you're going to rub it on the teeth. And we're going to use this as a guide. Now, this is a trick that Sir told me, but it's certainly been around for a while, especially with uh, technicians. And so what they do is they rub the paper on the teeth and now it's going to be up to you to interpret the grounds. Like, what the heck am I looking at here? So I want to guide you through and then I want to, us to take our mock-up and then we're going to take our mock-up and give it some texture and some lifelike appearance. Because if we look here, if you look at this uh, number nine, which is what it is upside down or the two one, it, this is what a smooth texture looks like when rubbed on with articulating paper. You see it's unbroken, it's pretty uniform, but also, and the advantage of using articulating paper is this. If you rub it and you get used to rubbing it, you can actually ascertain your line angles. Why? Well, because we know that the line angles are that, that facial and distal coming together, and so it's raised. So it's a very handy way for you to determine your line angle. And now let's interpret the grounds a little bit here. Because if we look at tooth number nine here, that's been a bit modified to look a little bit more like a natural tooth. We have, again, our proximal line angles, right? And if you note this very staccata pattern, right? You can see how that kind of rougher texture, that more pronounced texture gets picked up as these very strong horizontal lines. And you'll see that much easier. This is what denotes a heavy texture. So if it's appropriate to the patient, then it's up to you to copy this more heavy or pronounced texture. We already said what a smooth texture will look like. And that's with that very uh, uniform appearance. Now, where are our light reflective zones? Because we're gonna use all of this. All of this is hopefully gonna come together. Well, we talked about our mesiofacial line angle, but any area that's marked is technically a light reflective zone, right? And here's our light reflective zones on the adjacent. So I placed the composite. And as you can see, I may have been a little deficient towards the mid and cervical but I have a lot of excess, as you often will with class fours. By the way, where you see that excess light reflective zone in the middle, is that's where people end up with a lot of the excess, especially when we start using like light body, uh, light shade composite. So that's okay, but your job is to make it even. So here's our light deflective zones, and that's right here. You see it's that interproximal area, and it's these two facial depressions that we have. But look at our light deflective zones here. Well, they look a little bit bizarre, right? A little bit strange, and that's because of the excess. So.